Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful morning and I've got my iced coffee here on the table and I thought that it would be a great time to come out and just walk around and see what's blooming in the garden this morning. As you can see, the pergola is covered in beautiful flowers. So excited to show you that. Um, I'm also gonna get a uh, overhead shot from my bedroom window because it's really pretty to look at it from that angle too. And so let's just go check it out. The hydrangeas are filling in nicely. Already starting to see some blooms getting themselves ready for this summer. And there we go. Now this is a rambling rose called Felicity a Perpetu. If that's how it's said, I never know if I'm saying it right. I wish I could hear somebody say it <laughs> so I know I'd be getting it right um, but it's just so beautiful and then we've got some clematis here Betty Corning clematis with Madame Anisette Rose. And then we've got a whole bunch of branches of Madame Anisette and Summer Romance cascading down here. They have quite taken over the steps. So once those are done blooming, I'm going to cut those branches back severely because really starting to impede on the walkway down there. The clematis is looking beautiful. Princess Margarita. I'm not looking so good right now. I mean, this bloom looks good, but there's some rust on the petals, so I probably need to come in here and spray it. Maybe that'll help it out, help it along a bit. Honestly, it's gotten so bad. I kind of want to just rip off all the leaves and see if it comes back a little bit healthier. Goodness. There's some more clematis. And then here I've got Honeymoon Arbor Rose, which has got some buds on it. There's Zaid. Zaid is spelled Z-A-I-D-E. Um, lately when I try to edit my videos and I try to put in words along with the video, I don't know why, but iMovie doesn't cooperate and I'm having an extremely hard time um, editing the videos and putting words in. It, I'll put it in at the right spot and then it'll take me all the way back to the beginning of the video, which is not where I want the word to go. It's so strange. I don't know why. So sorry I can't put it up on the screen right now until I get some help, maybe from Scott, if he can figure it out, I hope. But here is Zaid. Again, it's spelled Z-A-I-D-E. Stunning Rose. Isn't that beautiful? And as you can see, Pompanella has kind of grown up and over the railing here. Let me get it out of times two mode. There we go. 
so here's another Zade with Arabella Clematis. And everything about this area looks pretty darn beautiful, except for the fountain, which still needs to be cleaned out. I've said that like three times now, but oh, we've been busy. Oh, and I wanted to show you this rose. This is probably the best rose I've seen on this rose bush. If I can get it down closer to the video camera. This is called Kiss Me Kate. Beautiful cupped rose. This is the best, probably the best bloom I've seen on this thing yet. So I'm definitely gonna keep it here. I was debating on whether I should pull it up, but maybe threatening it. <laughs> caused it to finally make a beautiful bloom so <laughs> it sure is stunning I love that that shape that cupped shape it's so beautiful and I went ahead and changed out my hanging baskets I've now got supertunia uh, vista snowdrift in each one and I've got all my garden guard not gardenias my geranium pots up on the wall and let's see here. Yeah, so this is Super Tunia Snowdrift. This is gonna completely fill this whole thing and hopefully cascade down the pot. And I've been looking for Snowdrift for several years because, um, because my, you know, garden name is Summer Moon Garden. I really love to have a lot of white in different areas of the garden. I love color too, but, it's nice to have some white just to go along with the summer moon theme. And I've always wanted to put white super tunias in here. And they were always so hard to find. It's so easy to find bubble gum, which is like that bright bubble gum pink. Um, but those gets the bubble uh, super tunia bubble gum gets so big that it would be really hard to keep it well watered in these. They really need a bigger pot. Um, to last all summer long into the fall. So I don't think that the snow drift here is as vigorous as bubble gum, but this really is gonna be my first time growing them, so we'll see. Um, but I'm really looking forward to just seeing, you know, cascading white blooms down here. It's gonna be so pretty. Um, and then I also put in here, which I'm realizing this does not get enough sun. This is a Bordeaux Supertunia, and then this one is called Lemoncello. So it's a purple and yellow mixture. I've got two of each in here, and I really need to, I think what I need to do is put this maybe at the end of the walkway here where it gets more sun. This one has more blooms on it. I guess it gets a little bit more sun than the other one, but I think I probably should just move them out where they'll both get some sun because I really want those to do well and I'm noticing that this one just gets a lot more shade than um than it will be good for the plants okay let's take this iced coffee and I want to show you let's see here what else can I show you there's a lot blooming this morning goodness look over here we've got Queen of Denmark Beautiful old rose. Along with the clematis, it's kind of gone a little crazy. Definitely need to move, move the lounge chair. And as you've noticed, I've cleaned out all these pots. Those are actually, these pots um, containers here have rush, not Russian sage, pineapple sage, excuse me. Um, and they're actually coming back. I couldn't believe it. They actually came back. So I'm going to leave those in there because the hummingbirds absolutely adore um, pineapple sage. So those are going to stay in there. Um, but I took a lot of pots out 
from around the pool, especially over here. I feel like it was just getting way too overcrowded, way too many things. It was looking cluttered um, and I was tired of it not being like restful to the eyes because these, these are all limelight hydrangeas back here. And you know, in the middle of summer, they're gonna be blooming nice and beautifully. And I really want them to be showcased, you know, by the pool, obviously. That's why I planted them there, planted them there. Well, the past couple of years, I've had my citrus trees lined up along the back side of the uh, furniture here, which when I first had them, that was fine. They were pretty small wasn't a big deal. Well, now they've like doubled in size and it really just, it's like all you see and you don't see the, the pretty shrubs behind. So, um, I'm definitely moving those. See, I've got, I'm having to repot all of them because the dirt was really low in some of the containers. So I'm working on repotting those now and I'm going to kind of dot them around. Um, what I may end up doing is putting maybe a couple on the back wall here and then um, maybe some more down by that trellis. We'll go down there in a second. So anyway, I'm just trying to get it a little bit cleaner and like just a little bit more simplistic um, back here so it doesn't feel so cluttered because I really like to have it. I mean, there's so much to look at anyway but isn't that, oh, I just love seeing those roses on top of the trellis, it's so pretty. Okay, let's go back here because there's some roses blooming back here. The hostas are doing so good. This thing is just beautiful. This makes me so happy. This right here makes me so happy for all the hostas that I planted. Um, back in the woodland garden last year hoping you know in three years time it'll look like that um, here's quietness still got some pretty blooms on it but most of it's bloomed out doing pretty well in this pot here what is going on? Are y'all playing hide and seek? <laughs> but everything on this corner is looking really good. Hanukkah Kloa. Oh my gosh, y'all. I cannot say that this morning. Just Japanese forest grass. We'll just say that. That's looking really good. And then the Veronica next to it. I actually really like that combination together. It's really pretty. And then we got kitties hiding in the hydrangeas <laughs> but we've put down some new mulch oh my goodness all the green beans have popped up wow that was fast I replanted this area I guess it was a couple weeks ago and I haven't even paid attention to it at all but wow that's great they came up quick oh and look here that rose, that dark red rose, that is a dark desire by Cordis. So pretty. I really would like to get that rose into the ground. I just gotta find a place for it. I just don't know where to put it. Oh, there's a rose blooming over here. And I don't know if I remember which one it is. I know it's a David Austin. Oh, wow. Look at how pretty that is. And it's in a whole bunch of shade, too. This is like in the line of the woodland garden, garden area. Isn't that pretty? I wonder if there's a tag in here, because I can't remember. Hmm. I don't see one. That is so pretty. Hmm, I'm trying to think, what did I plant in here? I don't know. 
maybe Ancient Mariner? Does that look like Ancient Mariner to y'all? I can't remember. Oh, it's beautiful though. Still, it's not filling in nicely here, but the weeds are filling in just as nicely as the plants, unfortunately. But that's the name of the game. Still haven't gotten out here to weed. Been busy with other things. But um, I'm kind of like scared to weed this area because I am, my skin is so sensitive and I get poison ivy really easily. Um, or, you know, I get a poison ivy rash. That's what I should say. I just, my skin is super sensitive. And so I've been kind of like waiting for Scott to take care of it. <laughs> so I don't have to do it, but you know, he's, he's busy working and he's been really busy coaching um, our son's baseball team. And, but that should be ending soon. Like summer's coming up. Kids are gonna be finishing school in, um, Gosh, just a few weeks. It's, I mean, today is what? Already May, May 11th? And the kids get out of school May 26th? So, oh my goodness. Time flies, y'all. And Elizabeth is going into sixth grade this fall. I just can't believe it. I can't believe I'm going to have a middle schooler. She is so excited, though. She's excited, but sad at the same time. You know how it is. It's a big change. Going to a new school. Look how pretty the hydrangeas are looking. We haven't had a lot of rain, so I'm, I'm impressed. They're holding up pretty well back here. So are the Merit Supremes. The Merit Supremes look great. And the Snapdragons, look at the Snapdragons. Oh my goodness, how pretty. So, so pretty. And here's the Canterbury Bells. believe how well these are doing here. This is great. Hydrangeas are holding up nicely. It looks like the lark spur is about to bloom. It's almost ready. So we've been busy bees around here. This is a pretty big garden to have to take care of everything. So while I've been putting a lot of effort on the front yard, keeping that weeded and watered and all that, and just, and just maintaining this area here, getting all the dahlias planted because I've, in fact, I've got like eight more dahlias coming in the mail that I totally forgot about that I ordered, which I'm gonna, <laughs> to figure out where to put maybe I'll put them behind the garlic um but I gotta weed that bed out too but see like already there's weeds growing in here I just I just weeded in there just did <laughs> and haven't even gotten back to this area yet but that's okay it's still beautiful even though it's got lots of weeds and I hope that this encourages you all nothing ever has to be perfect and it certainly isn't here. And I am not trying to put off an image of perfection by any means. Because I think there's a lot of beauty in the imperfections of gardening. Look at that. So beautiful. Bartzella peony. Oh, and I just totally skipped over my lady ash roses. I gotta show you these. These, this one doesn't have as many blooms on it as the other. So I'm gonna show you the other one. Isn't that pretty?
Lady Ash Rhodes and Kiri Tay Kanawa Clematis. I absolutely adore this combination. Isn't that beautiful? This is one of my favorite clematis vines. Oh, and look, we've got some Eden roses blooming. Yay, I've missed you, Eden. Look at that. Awesome. That's super exciting. And then all the dahlias are just sprouting up. Just starting to come up out of the ground over here. And over here as well. Got to come in here with my hoe and get rid of these weeds. Oh, and here's White Eden. Oh, I can't wait to see this one. I'm so excited. I've always wanted to grow White Eden. It's so hard to find though. That's going to be, oh, I love that color in there. It's kind of, it's hard to see on camera, but it's like a peachy pink, um, just like a nice little blush colored rose. Oh, it's so pretty. I love the original Eden, but sometimes the pink can be pretty intense. And so it's just nice to have both. Like I could honestly have all the Eden roses and be happy. In fact, I've got a, hey, don't be digging in my garden, silly girl. She has been a little mischievous kitty. Look at this. Look at this pile she's made in here. Oh my goodness. Silly girl. Oh, let's see here. There is Princess Alexandra of Kent right here. Not doing so well this time. See, this is why it's so frustrating. Like, she, if I remember right, last year, this rose bush was like flourishing, doing amazing. I don't know, maybe it's because there's like a ton of leaves piled up on top of her, underneath her. <laughs> that might be why, geez. Oh. But all these are, you know, Pumpinella is doing, going crazy. Such a pretty rose. Let me get this out of the way. Oh, and here's my earth angel that I planted back here. I cut her back and she's flushed out really nicely. <laughs> Cats are going crazy. They're just about to open up. I'm really interested to see how this earth angel does compared to the one I have up front because the one up front is really crowded by that summer romance and the Cinderella fairy tale on each side of it. This one has a whole lot more room around it. So I'm kind of excited to see if this one does better. I mean, so far it's definitely looking a whole lot better than um, that one. It's just, it's just bigger. And obviously, I mean, it makes sense because it's not being crowded out by two extremely vigorous rose bushes <laughs> next to it, so. Uh, let's come down this way. All the hydrangeas are starting to bud up, which is exciting. Cats are like running around like crazy. Ooh. Still have some peonies that haven't opened up quite yet. And then this year I'm noticing that these roses are getting pretty leggy because I haven't been, I have not been pruning these. So definitely after the first flush is done, I'm definitely going to come in here and cut some of these things back because 
just seeing a little bit too much of the roots. Or not roots, but you know, the base of the canes. And not as many blooms. But it still looks beautiful. Oh my goodness, y'all, look at this peony. What? What? That is amazing. I do not know what this is called. I probably got this from my mother. I had taken a couple of peony roots from her several years back and didn't know what what they were. But look at that. Look at that monster. It's huge. Gorgeous. Oh, it's so pretty. Let me put my coffee down for a second <laughs> so we can see. Oh, so pretty. I really would like to take some of the, these peony petals this year and make what's called a peony petal elixir. Um, so what you do is you mix, so there's a couple of different ways you can make it, but you can, it's basically you mix half like vodka alcohol and half um, either honey or you can use glycerin if you don't want to use um, honey because it can darken this, you know, make it darker obviously uh, with the honey. Um, but yeah, so it's half either glycerin or honey, half alcohol, and you let you know, let it soak in the peony petals. And what it does, it extracts the essence and the or the floral essence of the peony petals. Um, I actually did this with my roses last week. Um, and then you take the elixir as like a tonic um, and an energy medicine, which is what I'm studying a lot, you know, with naturopathic medicine, you study a lot about energy medicine and homeopathic medicine and how that works and I really find that kind of stuff fascinating and especially to make my own um, but with um, a peony or rose elixir you know those flowers are known to open up your heart open up the heart energy um, the the chi energy of the liver um, so it just helps um, bring up different emotions that may need to be released that you're holding on to. So it's just, it's an energy medicine that really helps your emotional and spiritual well being in a way and just helps balance you out overall. So I really find that kind of stuff fascinating. And to be able to grow my own petals and make my own elixirs would be just really exciting. I'm excited to try the rose one. Um, I haven't yet. It's still, still, uh, what's the word? Not marinating, but you know, it's still working its magic. <laughs> so I'm just waiting on that to finish up before I try it. But I definitely want to take some of these petals too, because those are so beautiful and there's still quite a few blooming down the way. Okay, so over here we've got some things growing. This here is um, a little patch of raspberry canes. And then I've got tomatoes in here. I've got peppers that I grew from seed and tomatoes I grew from seed as well as cucumber and green bean vines. And I'm hoping those will grow up over this trellis. Same thing here, cucumbers and green beans, tomatoes. And then this is Quatre Saison's lettuce, which isn't doing as well as I thought it would. It's very slow to get going and I'm not sure why. So we'll it's starting to get bigger. I fertilized it yesterday. Maybe that's what I need to do is just keep throwing fertilizer on it and it'll get better. 
And then same here, more cucumbers, more green beans, and then these are banana peppers that I grew from seed, which are really starting to take off now, which is great. Here we got a patch of strawberries, some daylilies, and then here is our little, the beginning of our side garden. Oh, hi, good morning. How are you? Okay, sorry about that. Elizabeth just woke up. She's not feeling well, so she's staying home today. Um, so she was just letting me know that she was up. Um, but anyway, so here I've got, uh, this is Moon Rock Hydrangea, which I just bought four more of these to put by our, um, our garage area. I'm really excited about that. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It's just the name because it has a moon in it and I'm summer moon garden. So I'm just like anything that can like get that vibe in this garden, I'm all for it. <laughs> so I'm just excited about that. Um, but here's a new peony that I just planted. I'm pretty sure this one is called Shirley Temple, if I remember right. Either that or no, no. Maybe it's Raspberry Sunday. I think that's what it is. Raspberry Sunday. Uh, we got some August moon hostas here. I don't remember what rose this is, but it's budding up. Got lots of buds on it. I cut it back real good because it was getting kind of leggy. And then this one was getting super crazy leggy too, all over the place. Um, and I can't remember off the top of my head which one it is, but I've talked about it many times before. Oh, Madame something, right? <laughs> It's an older rose, uh, but all the hydrangeas are looking really, really nice. We haven't had much of any rain, so they're standing up nice and tall. Usually once we get a good summer rain pour down, these things flop all over the place because they're Annabelle hydrangeas and they tend to do that. Um, this year, I didn't prune them as low. So I'm hoping, 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 hoping that since I didn't prune them back so hard that they'll be a little bit stronger and not um, flop all over the place. But there's gonna be some really pretty, really pretty blooms on this. This year, there's usually, I mean, every year there's always pretty blooms. Um, but I do love Annabelle's, but they're just not as strong. So what I ended up doing is I planted um, invincible there's an, uh, an invincible hedge in the back as well as I've got some invincibles dotted around back in the woodland garden area um, and then we've got autumn ferns you know all along here with more August moon um, hostas what are you doing baby you, you find the one dirt patch that we haven't finished yet we really want to put some stone here. Would really like to make this a stone pathway. Just haven't gotten to it yet. My husband already mulched half of this and didn't get to this part, which obviously Princess is enjoying <laughs> rubbing herself in the dirt. Oh, to be a cat. Wouldn't it be fun to be a cat for a day just to see what it's like? <laughs> Go wherever you want to go. Do whatever you want to do, right? You sweet girl. Oh, you should just sweet baby. Yes, you are. So sweet and so playful. So yeah, that's that's it for this side. Let me show you the uh, the actual side. All right, here we are on the side garden. And I don't remember if I showed you guys yet, but we took out those ugly um, gardenia shrubs that were completely overtaking everything. And we put in some bloomstruck hydrangeas on each side. A lot more compact, a lot more easy care. And I honestly think a lot prettier. And they've already got, I mean, everything is looking awesome. Everything's got blooms on it. We're going to have a really pretty summer around here. This is filling in nicely. 
This is, these are the Dear Dolores hydrangeas. Look, covered in blooms or buds, not quite blooms, but lots of pretty stuff to come. There's another Dear Dolores right here. And then these are the Summer Crush bloom um, hydrangeas in between them. Another Dear Dolores. And then I got Dear Dolores all back here. And then the, these are all bloom struck right in here. Everything's looking really nice. The ferns are leafing out beautifully. I'm really happy with this area. And thankfully, the weeds have been not going crazy, at least in this one spot. This area is still doing really well. Nothing's wilting. Everything's staying nice and green and happy. So I think, I think what, what helped is I just dug a really extra deep hole because there was like 10 rocks in that hole um, for this hydrangea right here. I had to take out like a ridiculous amount of rocks to uh, get that one planted and so I think that's probably why things were drying up so fast when you've got that many rocks in the ground, especially around a hydrangea. You know, the rocks heat up really fast in the sun and it's gonna um, heat your hydrangeas up too much. So I was able to remove those and put some really good soil around it, as well as this one right here. We did the same thing. And um, I think we'll have really good success with it. So I'm excited about that. This magnolia shrub here is looking beautiful. It's leafing out, which makes me happy. I was worried about it for a little while. This area, for some reason, again, probably because of all the rocks, um, has been kind of like a no man's land, except for weeds for quite a while. But um, we did our best to really take care of this area this year because I was tired of it looking like it was always in shambles. Here, look at Pompanella. So pretty. Very happy rose. Isn't that beautiful? Makes me so happy. Oh, and then I didn't show you this yesterday. But here I've got an etched salmon peony bloom. Looks a little tattered right now, but still very pretty. And then the front garden area here, because we had all that wind, it's a little beat up looking with all the dead branches and the grass, but um, still looking pretty good despite the fact. Let's see if that American Beauty Rose has opened up this morning. Oh boy, it's getting there. Hmm. And that's a pretty color. I'm excited about that one. Oops. And here is interesting. That's supposed to be Bliss Parfuma, but it looks completely different than that one over there. Hmm. Maybe it's just a different stage of the rose. You know how sometimes when a rose first opens up it looks completely different? But that one looks, even the petal structure looks different though. Because this one looks more cupped. Oh, so weird. Interesting. I wonder if they gave me the wrong rose. Because see how different that looks? I don't know. Only time will tell. 
but that's really interesting. That's a really pretty rose though. I mean, I both, I love them both. So, I mean, I'm happy either way, but, and this one hasn't bloomed yet. We shall see. And then here is this amazingly massive trio of roses here. <laughs> I'm still looking at this like, how in the world did this even happen? <laughs> It's just like so amazing. Oh, I kind of wish it wasn't right next to the driveway so I didn't have to worry about, you know, keeping it out of the driveway so much. Maybe that's why it started growing this way. Probably so. Because I've been pruning this the driveway side a lot um, to keep it out. <laughs> to keep it out of the way. Here's Poseidon, oh my gosh, so pretty. This rose really is spectacular. Oh, if only this rose would have been blooming during the rose show. <laughs> Oh, what a bummer. This would have been so great to enter this in. Of course, the rose we had just before the rose show, we had a terrible windstorm come through and it just beat up everything. So it was like, had a bunch of blooms that hadn't opened yet, like these. None of these had opened yet. None of the Cinderella fairy tale had opened yet. And then, so the ones that weren't open, you know, you can't really show a rose that's not open. And then the ones that were open were beat to shreds. <laughs> so it's like, oh man, I didn't have a lot of um, good, you know, good specimens to use this year. But what, you know, what's great though, we haven't had any rain this week. And so I believe that's why Cinderella Fairy Tale is doing so well. Because she you know in the past rain has destroyed all these blooms so it's looking so pretty oh my gosh just covered definitely the best year for Cinderella fairy tale can't get much better than that And look, still, look, Olivia, Olivia is still doing so great. Still. I'm so impressed with that rose. There's Celsiana. Another one of my old roses. I entered this rose in and I did get a, um, a blue ribbon for this rose. And I also entered in Ispahan and got a blue ribbon for that one. And then I got some more, you know, blue is for first place, red is for second place, and yellow is for third. So I got a few of each. Look at this rose. I don't remember what the name of this is, but it's a pretty one. Right next to Madame Anisette. So pretty. Look at them all lined up like that. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That's pretty awesome. And then I, I've showed you guys Olivia hundreds of times, I feel like, but it's always worth it. Look at this big bloom here. Massive. I'm trying to focus here. That thing is huge. This 
rose right here. I'm trying to remember what the name is. It's been here for a really long time. And if I look back in my older videos, I know I've said it before. I just can't think of it. Maybe Penelope? That might be it. Foxgloves are still looking beautiful. And then I've got some of this little rose down here that I'm trying to get this one to climb up over the trellis too. So this trellis will be loaded down with roses on all sides. So, okay, that's how everything is looking today. Oh, look, lots of blueberries. Interesting how these didn't get zapped like the ones in the backyard did. Hmm. Maybe because it's sunnier. But yeah, so here's our crazy work area right now. I had to, I still have to repot these. These are super heavy and it's really hard for me to do these. So I'm going to get Scott to help me with these. But these I was able to repot. The soil level had gone like all the way down to here. And so it was really time to, to fix those. They really needed to be redone. See like how deep this one is? This one was harder for me to pull out so I couldn't do it on my own. So I'll get Scott to help me with that. Um, but as you can see back here, I've got four moon rock hydrangeas that I'm going to put in this spot, which we need to clear out the daffodil foliage, clear out all the weeds. And, um, I'm going to have him dig the holes in here because these holes are really hard. Like the clay here is just really, really difficult to get through. So I'm going to have him use the auger to get uh, make the holes bigger, put in a lot of good, um, good fertile dirt. Um, so hopefully these, these will do well. I feel like everything I've planted here, again, like the other side, um, has not done well. And it's probably because of rocks and clay. So we're going to do our best to dig everything up and put, put in some good garden soil to help feed the roots. And, um, Hopefully we'll have something that thrives here and we can have it catch up with this beautiful camellia here and finally get some, a little bit of privacy, at least, you know, in the summertime, um, which not to say I love my neighbor, absolutely adore her. She is a sweetheart, lovely woman. Um, but I don't know. I just, I like to feel tucked in. I like to feel tucked in a garden, um, especially with flowers. So moon, moon rock hydrangea is going to be the perfect option, I believe. Look how beautiful that bloom is. If I can focus on the tag there. There we go. Lava lamp moon rock hydrangea. I love the shape of those blooms. Oh, so if you live up north, this is a really good option for you guys. Hardiness zone three, and it gets four to six feet tall and wide and it just needs like part sun four to six hours that's really part sun not much of a need to look at the back tag but but yeah I mean that's I'm so excited about that I think it's gonna do really well here and um, hopefully we can get this whole area cleaned up because it is a mess right now. But that's, you know, you gotta have some area where you do your work. Not everything can look perfect all the time. And again, I am not, not striving for per perfection here. Um, I just enjoy what I do and gardening makes me happy, even if it's a little messy sometimes. But this is kind of like, the so the front yard and this area back in here, 
are really like the tidiest areas of my garden. Everywhere else is pretty loosey-goosey and just letting nature do its thing for the most part, except, you know, you don't want weeds choking out your precious plants that you've spent money on, so. But I enjoy having this area really nice and tidy and, oh, and I forgot to show you this. I planted a Supertunia bubblegum here. So that's gonna fill in this whole pot. That's one plant and it will literally fill that entire pot and hang down, covered in flowers, all the way down the sides by the end of summer. So, if you have never tried Supertunias before, I highly recommend that you do. They're a proven winner's brand. Amazing plants. I love them so much. Super easy to take care of. You just need to water, you know, keep them watered and fertilized, and they'll keep blooming for you. They're amazing. Okay. All right. I've gone for, I've gone full circle. So I think now is the time to say goodbye. If anything shows up that I'm just like, oh my gosh, you guys have got to see this. It's so pretty. I will definitely do another video. Um, but yeah, so I hope, I really hope that you guys have a great week. And I hope that you've enjoyed this. I hope it's been inspiring to you. Get out, get out in nature, connect with mother earth, plant some beautiful flowers and just enjoy life and, you know, enjoy the happiness that it brings to you. If, if these kind of things bring you happiness, which for me, it certainly does. So, um, but I hope you guys have a wonderful week and I'll see you in the next video. Okay. Bye-bye. The roses on the pergola are looking beautiful this afternoon.